Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Life and Sound podcast. I'm your host, Kid Capone. Today, I have a very special guest, Kabali. He's a Toronto-based artist and sample maker. I've been following him for a really long time, and I'm a huge fan of his work, and I'm really excited that he's here on the show. Kabali, how you doing, bro? I'm chilling, bro. Thank you for having me, bro. This, uh, this is my first podcast ever, bro. This is crazy. I'm, well, I just like, I'm... started. Oh, you just started? Yeah, I just started. Like, you're my third episode now. I guess we're both learning, bro. I guess we're both learning. So, 100%, be, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I'll just start off with some of the easy stuff, you know. Uh, where did the name Kabali come from? Basically, like, how it came about is, like, when I started making music, I was hella young. Like, I was, like, not hella young, but I was, like, uh, 12, 13. And so, around that time, like, I was hella into Pokemon. So, yeah. my favorite Pokemon was called Kobalion. So I just okay. chopped off the ending, just Kobali. That's easy. That's, uh, that's how it, I wanted to be Bali at first, but then there's like the rapper Belly. Yeah, uh, Kobali is more like you know it's more unique, so I just stuck with that. Hey, it still sounds original, and it's like it still has this like iconic ring to it to me. Like I yeah, like I, I like it. Yeah, I like it. At first, like I've had it. Yeah, no, I've been. I had it. I've had it for five, six years. Like there's been points where I changed my name. But then it just, it wasn't hitting the same, bro. It just, it just wasn't hitting the same as Kowali, so I, I stuck with it. It's part yeah. of your identity now. It's part of my identity now, bro. It's part of my identity now. So you started making music around, like, 12, 13. What was uh, your, like, relationship with music like before that? Um, before then, hmm. Uh, I did, you know, as, as every kid, I'm sure, every, I, you know, my mom signed me up for piano lessons and all that when I was a kid. I attended them. I didn't really like them. I hated them, actually. I hated them. Um, other than that, my mom signed me up for guitar lessons as well. I didn't really like that. I, I guess I was just, I was just way too young to understand it, to really, really appreciate it. 100%. Um, yeah, it wasn't until, you know, later on in my life that I, you know, went on and did the learning myself, but yeah. And then... Uh, for music, like I grew up in church, um, I grew up in a basically I'm I'm like Coptic Orthodox. It's this like um, I'm I'm North African, I'm Egyptian, and basically like uh, the Coptic religion is kind of like native to Egypt. So like all the all the songs they sing are like ancient like Egyptian like songs type stuff. So, That's like, awesome. Yeah. So in the in the church, we used to sing all the time. Like we used to sing like you know, those ancient Egyptian songs and make all those melodies. And I guess just from like, I don't know. I want to say that those, like just always hearing it kind of inspired me a little bit as well. It kind of, I I wouldn't say it kind of has an influence on my, on my sound. Yeah. Whether it's um, like direct or indirect, it's kind of yeah, just in yeah, your yeah. blood. It's in my, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's, I think that definitely had something to do with it. Cause you just constantly hearing it. So that, I, I think that's probably the, total that's everything oh in my school there was like a choir for the kids i was part of it um it sounds like music for you like at least all the best experiences seem to be like intertwined with like you know a relationship or like an emotional attachment to it like whether that's you know you're not just hearing it at church you're like going to church with people yeah in choir you're singing with people you know amongst so, others yeah it's like, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I feel like even now, I, at least from what I see, like you get a lot of joy through collaborating with people. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. I love that. I love, I love collaborating, bro. It's um, you yeah, know, it's honestly a cheat code. It's a cheat code because you know, like you have one person sauce, and you have another person sauce. You put it together. It's this like weird thing that like it's, nobody's ever heard. Especially like when this. you trust the other person's ear, you know. Yeah, I think it also like also it comes down to how good. You're not even your non, not even your music relationship, but like how good your just actual relationship is with the person. Because people I collaborate with, like um, or the sample makers I collaborate with on melodies and stuff like that, um, you know they're my they're my like best friends. Like I talk to them like three times a day type shit. That's the so, best. Yeah. So when we, we we like bro nine times out of ten we don't even talk about talk about oh yeah let me send you a starter let me send you whatever no we're just. We just talking you know, everyday shit and just it's naturally just, just comes up. Yeah, it just naturally it comes up. So yeah. Yeah, I've seen like is it the uh, the chosen ones, right? The chosen ones. Dude, the that, chosen I'm one, telling though. you, like when I saw that, like start bubbling and formulating, like that's the future to me. I see it. Yeah. Like I see it now, bro. Like I'm like these young guys, like the the bond that they have, like 
you can hear it in the music. I know it sounds kind of weird, but no, like, for sure, for sure, I for feel sure. like you guys genuinely are the future, man. I'm excited. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's um also I think it's really important that um you try to get yourself into into a community like that. Uh, you try to just like if you're if you're a producer, if you're like kind of just starting or whatever. I think it's really important that you just put yourself in a community like that because in chosen ones like. Bro, like we're all, we're all so we, we, we all know each other so well that we're just so fluid with each other. Like if I could, if I play a sample, that's ass, bro. All man, but yo, nigga, this shit's trash, bro. Everyone's fucking on my ass clowning me, bro. <laughs> and you, and you need that. Like you, you need it's that healthy. because, yeah, you need that. You, you don't need these like people saying, yo, I love this, bro. This is crazy. I love how. You, no, you don't need that. And a yes man gets you nowhere. Yeah, and then chosen ones like, it's this kind of low-key constant pressure of improving because let's say like let's say um x y x y nothing he's a uh, uh, he's amazing good, good friend of mine yeah good friend of mine um he's in chosen ones but he could go on and he could play some like something crazy and then i'll be like fuck i need to level my shit up and 100%, then i'll go man. and i'll make something crazy and then i'll make something crazy and i'll play for him and he's like fuck i need to make my shit better too and it's back back and forth like with all the healthy bands, competition like, you're like pushing each other to be greater each time you're making something new yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. So yeah, I think it's definitely um beneficial to be in like a community of some sort. How did you first get linked up with everybody? Like, how did the? Because uh, I know everybody. It's not like you guys all live next to each other. It's oh, pretty fuck re- no, bro. It's we're remote, all, right? We're all over, the, all over the world, bro. Yeah, let's go into that a little bit. How did you kind of start the you know the 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 group, if you will? Uh, basically, um, you know Elkin, right? Yeah, he's yeah. amazing. Basically, um. Was it like two years ago? Basically, we met each other in a, in a live. There was a sample maker. He was on an i like on a, on an IG live. Okay. And um, he the the other guy he had Elkin on like he had him like go on live with him and Elkin played some of the stuff and like oh this guy's crazy whatever. I followed him. We just started talking back and forth for months and then eventually, he sent me a link. He's like yo or on the story he put like yo I I just made a Discord. Who wants to get on? So I just put, I'm like, yo, add me to it. So he sent me the link. I, I joined, and, and that was the beginning of it. Just off an Instagram live, and it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. It was like divine intervention. Yeah, no, really. It's crazy. I don't even, whatever me and him talk about it, like how everything started, we're like, yeah, that's like, there has to be something else going on. Because it, she was so, it's crazy. It's yeah. wild how that stuff works, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. like. And then how did some of the other people kind of join the mix? Um, originally when I joined, I think everybody joined within the same like week. Um, Was it more so like you're all kind of like fans of each other's work? Yeah. No, but originally when I came in, the only person I knew was Elkin. That was the only person I knew. Mm. But over the years, not over the years, but like eventually over the months went by, we just like, we just grew to know all, all, everybody. Everybody knew each other. Everybody knew kind of what our sound was. And yeah, no, that's how it came about. I don't, I, I can't say how the others join, but it's probably something similar to mine. Like, they, they see now can post on a story, they got them in, type shit. So yeah. It all sounds really natural though, and like now it's grown beyond the music, and you guys are genuinely friends. Yeah, no, it's it, it's because bro, like, I, in this industry, like, you see so many times people say like, oh yeah, you want to network, whatever, and you can so, like, you can see, at least I can, I can see clearly when someone's trying to network. And they're trying to act all friendly, but it's all for like monetary gain. It's all trying to, they're all trying to like sec- be friendly, or whatever, because I know, oh, this guy's tapped in, he's locked in, no, 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 no. So I have to, I have to lock in with him. So it's, it's like genuine, impure, though. impure intentions. But when we all, when Chosen One was founded, like we were all, we are all nobodies, bro. We were all nobodies. Like nobody knew each other. Nobody had no nothing to their name. So it's like it was just the yeah. love of creating art. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to say we're all people. We're all somebody's now, but like was, at the beginning, we were all. No, like, you are. You guys are, bro. Like you guys, you know what it is? Is you've grown. You're not at the level you guys were when you started. Oh fuck no! You've no, grown, no, no, no. and that's yeah, the beauty no. of it. Yeah, and absolutely. I, that's a helpful piece of advice. I love that. Like definitely getting yourself integrated into a community is a huge like stepping stone to help anybody grow. Yeah, no, because I remember when I joined. Um, it was like. By the summer, two years ago or something, um, when I joined, my sound was nowhere close, like nowhere close to where, like the way it is now. It what wasn't until, thi- 
What, mm-hmm. I was going to say, what were some things that uh, impacted you kind of like early on when you first started working with them that helped change your sound? No, it, was, it, it wasn't even people being like, yo, look at this crazy, uh, this crazy VST. Look at this. Cra-. It was just like, yeah, as I told you earlier, like just them, just by virtue of them just showing me what they were working on. I mean, like, oh, shit, this is crazy. Now I got to make my own crazy stuff back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, no, like event, like originally when I joined, my shit was like, yeah, it was nowhere where it, where it used to, be, where it is now. But like six months after I joined, that people started being like, yo, like, Kaboli's Kaboli's making some crazy shit now. That's, that's, <laughs> that's like, <laughs> yeah. But so, yeah, that's came about. so like, how long were you creating samples before you were you decided you were ready to drop your first pack? Um, hmm. yeah. So I, I'm. I'm 18 now, so, yeah, no, when I started producing, I was, like, yeah, as I said, 12, 13, so, was, I was producing for, like, six years. That's six, amazing. Five, six years. Um, yeah, thank you. And I decided to kind of focus on the sam- hone in on the samples specifically, i think say, like, two and a half years ago, somewhere around that. I think that's the timeline. It's all, it's all a blur, to be honest, but, like, around there, like, two and a half years ago, and, um... Yeah, no, but up to that point, I have had I, I was using loops, but I was also making my own samples. They weren't just they weren't samples at that point. They're just loops, like some like Electra X Art Bank. Okay, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, I would say that it was like because that first pack that I dropped. Which which pack are you? Which pack do you have in mind? Because for me, there's so many first packs. Which pack are you talking about? Uh, it could be any of your like you the one I guess the moment. We'll do a couple. We'll do the first okay. one when you decided you were actually like, all right, I'm ready to show this to the world. Like, how did you feel that you were like, all right, I'm confident in this. I feel like I could show this and it could it could get some traction or at least some attention. Um, What I did was before anything, before I like dropped like my first paid pack or official or whatever pack. Um, This was like at the beginning of the pandemic. What I used to do is I used to make like 12 samples and I'd go on YouTube whatever, and I put them out for free, and I'd be like, uh, for you to download it, you need to subscribe. Very, like, very simple trade-off, very simple interaction. Definitely. So I did, th- yeah, so I did those. I was doing those all the time. Like, I was always dropping free packs, like, always dropping free packs on the YouTube. And, um, yeah. About how no, often were you dropping the packs? Once every two weeks. Like, each pack had, like, 12 um, samples or whatever. Um, That's a lot of creation. Were- yeah, yeah, no, back then, back then, one thing of those is, like, I don't, I don't know, back then I was much faster, I don't say faster, it just, like, when I was making a sample, it took much quicker, like, back in the day, I could, I could knock out seven samples in a day, but now, like, one sample takes, like, fucking three days, three, what four would you days. Say, what would you say has changed? Is it necessarily your processing, or your mental, or just kind of your approach? No, no, it just, um... I think as the music got better, as we started to get better, like it, you, I needed, I needed to put more hours to communicate the ideas that I had in my head. Because when I was first started, the the ideas I had in my head were simple. They were just like, do this, do this. But now, like when I'm starting the sample, or when I'm just starting any piece of music, like the what I have in my head is like really, really complex. So I those four days, those three, four days, like are how long it takes for me to fully communicate it. If you, Definitely. If you, yeah, if you know what I mean. So yeah, like, like you just you've grown as a creator, and you know your thoughts and your ideas of music have grown. So now, yeah, it's, and I'm more it of a, takes like, more detail. Yeah, and I'm like much more of a perfectionist now too. Like I'm very, the point sometimes it can be uh, against me, but like overall, like I think it's um yeah no it's because I'm more, a bit more of a perfectionist, so I spend more time just like the nuance and all that. So. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's it's playing to your benefit. It, it works out being a perfectionist in music, I feel like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. But yeah, no, I was dropping those packs for like a minute. And then um, I dropped this one pack. Uh, it was like two summers ago. I dropped it on, uh, you know, Unknown Library. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Shout out, uh, shout out Ravis and all that. Uh, I, dropped, I dropped it on there. And basically, yeah, it was just like a, it was like a pack of 40 samples. For like five dollars, bro. For like five dollars, yeah. No, I was just, I, bro. I niggas needed money, bro. <laughs> yeah, needed money, I, bro. I, I were, feel you. There were synths to be bought, pedals to be bought, bro. You and, had to level up. <laughs> the free packs weren't cutting it no more. They were, nah. they weren't cutting it no more. So yeah, I did that. 
Have Ooh, you ever uh, had a uh, like normal job, or do you just pretty much live off of music? I live off of music, but I've been looking for a normal job though. It's, uh, I've been trying to get a, like secure something as well because I want to nah. like. No, no, I need it like to to like pay rent and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, no. So I dropped out on, on the library. It was cool. It did some. You know, it probably got me what like a fucking. I could probably get a T-shirt with <laughs> with the the revenue from there. But like, I feel you. Yeah, but then yeah, fast forward a year. No, no, no. Bro, the timeline is so shaky. In it's December right, of that year, worry. in December of that year, I dropped um my first paid, full paid pack on my own like uh, website. It was called uh, Desolation. That was Desolation was how I discovered you, and I'm a huge fan of that pack. And the breakdown that you did for that pack was the breakdown that got me inspired to create my own breakdowns, bro. Wow, bro. That's I'm crazy. telling you, that was the one. Like I had seen some other ones, but like when I had really seen the one for desolation and like heard desolation and it's like full entirety i was just like this is the future bro this is like <laughs> this is the shit that i've been looking for like personally on my own journey like yeah looking for new music like music that excites me you know and mm-hmm. i was like mm-hmm. this shit is amazing yeah yeah, yeah. thank you bro yeah, yeah no of course. that so that was the that was when i dropped and um yeah, no, I think people started when I dropped it, like got a little traction off it. I was, I was making like now, now the number, the numbers I was pulling in from that were they weren't like laughable, like they were decent numbers. Like I was yeah. making like a decent amount, like a whatever amount on it. And uh, yeah, a lot of people found out about me through that pack. A lot of people found out about me through that pack and that and that breakdown that accompanied it. Um, Would you say yeah. that those two worked really well together? Like the breakdown kind of gave you traction for the pack. Oh yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, that's a like marketing one on one. Like you, like in the sample make it, bro. You need to drop, you need to drop like a video before it. Um, Definitely the pack, and then a breakdown of the sample in the pack. That's like the trifecta. If you want, you want hundred percent. Yeah, that's how you get. The, that's how you, you can't. If you just drop it by itself, it's not gonna do. It's not gonna well, do anything as well as if you do that. The the rollout. So yeah, no. What was, was the like, creation yeah. of a uh, desolation like? Like was what was just, that process like for you? It was the same old, same old shit, bro. Just waking up, fucking riding my bike to the coffee shop, getting iced coffee, coming back, and just like sitting in the basement for the whole day until I just came up with something. And I, you know, you know, at the end of the day, I went out, went to the coffee shop again, yeah, got the iced coffee, came back, finished it off, and called it a day, bro. That was that was pretty much that was pretty much it. it was nothing. No, it was nothing like that. I was so, listening to a lot of. Yeah, we said. Uh, I was just gonna say, so what's like your uh, daily routine kind of like? It's like you go get your coffee, like my do you daily. Have... Uh, hey, go ahead. Name? Oh, I was just gonna say, go ahead, like your daily habits. Uh, my daily routine on it is pretty monotonous. It's pretty um, it's pretty much the same old. Like I try my best to change it, but like yeah, no, it's pretty much waking up, <laughs> going. Now I got my license. I got my driver's license, but now up to this point, it's been like wake up, going a walk or something, going on a, on a uh, bike ride to the um the coffee shop get the coffee come back um start working work until I, like later in the later in the later hours and then after i go back to the coffee shop to like kind of refresh get the get the coffee come back and then just keep working or when it gets late when i come back from that second uh bike ride the second coffee shop run i probably just like go listen to music or like just you know yeah you've been working all day yeah 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 yeah, no, no. It's important not to get like completely um, drained. Definitely, I agree. Like, what are some things you do to balance out like your heavy hours of creating? I don't even. I don't even do nothing to try to like to balance it out. I, I my, my honestly, I think my body just tells me. My body just pulls the plug on me when when it think it when it thinks it's time. Like when I try to sit down and make a new idea and able to say no, not today. You're not yep. coming up with you're not coming up with shit today, bro. You're not <laughs> you, coming you up put with in nothing, the work bro. already. <laughs> yeah, you're not coming up with anything. <laughs> Call it a night. Yeah. So do you ever? I know you're young, so I know it's probably you. You can or can't say it, but do you ever like smoke or drink or anything when you want to create? Not really. Not really, That's good. No, at this point. I like hearing that because some of the uh, sample makers I've been asking about that recently, it's like similar, bro. Like I've been yeah. seeing a lot of similarities. Like Oscar Zulu had a mm. live yesterday, bro, and he never goes on live. And I watched it all day yesterday, and 
uh, one of the things they asked him was like, you know, oh, do you smoke or drink? And he's like, I've been drunk twice in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, it's yeah. why you're getting the placements. That's why you're doing the work. I think there's a big like synchronicity between good habits and like good health and like success. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, we honestly, I don't, I don't smoke or drink that much. I just have like a little like nicotine problem, but that's like nothing. That's nothing. It's not, it's not holding bad. you back. It's not holding me back or anything. Nah. It's not like I have to, whatever. No, but no, yeah, no. no. It's not like I'm like uh, completely straight, straight edge. Like I'm opposed to doing it. Just like I'm kind of just. I don't. Right now in my life, I don't really like feel like I need it that much. So I'm just like, yeah, there's, there's no good. Need, you know, I know some people who it's like you know they like have to smoke every time they're gonna go create, and it's like no, no, that's no. not the case for you. No, no, no. I can just. I, I'm just on fucking, I'm on Ableton with a couple water fighting demons, bro. Yes, <laughs> let's go. That's what I like to hear, bro. Yeah. Real creative shit. Yeah, bro. Nah, it's perfect. <laughs> nah, it's perfect. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what is like the rhythm of your creative process like? Like, what do you usually like to start on or like what kind of sparks the initial idea? Uh, usually I sit in front of my, my Rev2 here and I... um. I just what I what I do is I I create a patch on it, and then I just kind of just I kind of just fuck around and try to come up with a chord progression. And that once I come up with the chord progression, what I found once I make the chords, everything just starts to fall into place. Everything like I start everything becomes more fluid. Like it just that initial trying to make the chord progression is like honestly it's the most difficult part of the whole thing. Agreed. Because like yeah no because like no matter like you can have some crazy textures and sounds and atmospheres and all this thing but if the original idea or chord progression is as there's nothing you can do to save it because the, the emotion the emotion lies in the in the chords the emotion lies in lies in the chords and the way you like harmonize with them with the chords and with other notes and stuff like that so if your chords are off then i don't think you can really do it's better to just start again to be honest agreed yeah, yeah. Did, did you uh are you like self-taught on I know you had like your lessons with piano and guitar a little bit when you were younger but are yeah. you pretty much self-taught on the keys and guitar now? Yeah, no, I just my knowledge with the keys and color they just come from like watching YouTube videos, watching like Same. learning learning the scales, learning all the different, you know, neo soul chord progressions, different like voicing all that. Would you say um, the neo soul was like a kind of a bigger influence on you? Um yeah, no, I I make R and B stuff most of the time. R and B is like the main genre that I like that I work in. R and B and soul, those are probably the biggest. I don't really make hard shit as much as I want to. I I, I don't have any hard shit, like any dark dark shit. I want to make some dark shit, but like, yeah, no, I say, hmm, yeah, no, I'd say, yeah, no, neo soul definitely has a big uh, big influence on me. Definitely has a big influence on me. The my. Honestly, I don't look, I don't look up like how to play um, neo soul chords like just because I know the I know how like music theory. Yeah, you understand I, like, I know, the, the I understand, underlying thing. Like yeah, like chord extensions, like sevenths, ninths, all elevens, all all that stuff. The secondary dominance. You know, the whole oh thing. yeah, tritone yeah. substitutions. Uh, I, hey hey, I don't know, bro. <laughs> my head, off camera, you might have to educate me on that one, bro. Oh bro, <laughs> that is okay. Off camera, we'll, we'll we'll talk about it. But I'm telling you, that's the same way secondary dominance or some secret sauce for you. Tritone substitution is like the extra layer. It's like the bonus level of that. We'll talk after, bro. We'll see. All right. Uh, Capone so, made me look like an idiot out here, bro. Nah, bro. I'm just, <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm just gonna. I'm, I have no another player, video bro. I'm gonna send you. That's that was mind blowing. That I saw the other day. That you're gonna be like, what the fuck, dog? Yeah, no, no, no. I feel you. Um, so like typically from the time inspiration strikes you and you kind of like find that first idea, how long until you kind of have like a, like a completed thought, a finished product. Um, yeah, yeah no, like probably as I said before, like th three, four days. Um, no, I say three days, but yeah, no, um, uh, part of me wants to like, be like, oh yeah, it's so, it takes so long to communicate my ideas. No, 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 no. But at the same time, like, bro, like, there's a lot of time that can be, like, cut down from that. Because a lot of times, like, I'll just be sitting there, like, completely zoned out with the music just running. Same. I, yeah. I'll just pace around my studio. Like, I'll let yeah, it play, yeah, yeah. and I'll just listen and take it in. Yeah. But honestly, at the same time, I think that 
that in and of itself is very important to the process. Like that just like reflective, meditative type thing where you just like you're listening to the music and you're just trying to when it makes you zone out, like that that, that that's definitely an important part of the process. So honestly, yeah. I yeah, I think three days is a yeah, I don't think I can cut it down any shorter than that. I can try. Two days maybe do you kind of like lay down i guess would it be like the more important like core elements first and then you kind of use the other days to do like more like detail oriented work no with me like what i usually my process is more like um it's very very at the beginning when i start it when i start the idea i have little to no idea what i'm doing like i have no idea what it's gonna sound like i'm not like other producers that like they come in with an idea they know, they hear in their head how the finished product sounds like. I'm not like that. Like, I come, it's more of like a discovery process to me. Like, I start with a basic idea. And, it keeps uh, it exciting like that, though, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, and I'm and I'm working through it. It's like it's like as if there's, like, there's like a treasure chest, like, in the, in the sand, and you can see the, the, the like, tip of it sticking out this, the, the dirt. And I compare it to my process because over the days, like, I'm just, like, you know, digging it digging, out slowly, digging away, trying to trying to see what what this idea looks like. Because I don't know when I start, I have no idea what it's gonna look like. But mm-hmm. at the end of it, I'm like, okay, now this is there's what this image. is what it's supposed to. Yeah, here's the image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Cause you, yeah, that's how it is. Cause you'll be surprised. Like sometimes I start, I'll start something originally starting like dark or originally starting hella distorted or whatever. Mm-hmm. But by the end of it, it's a smooth, like emotion, smooth emotional R and B cut. Yeah, I'm like where did we get this from? Where did this, where did this come from? <laughs> it took so, on a new life. Yeah, exactly. So it's, yeah, no, my process is very discovered. Like I'm just discovering as I go. So yeah. When you're uh kind of like say you have like a you know some piano or guitar or something like already kind of laid out, what's your process like for adding vocal layers? Because that's something I'm trying to explore more myself. Like adding my own voice versus bringing in like a vocalist. Um, my own voice. Um. Like, you're saying, like, how do I lay down the vocals? Yeah, like, like uh, I guess, like, how do you kind of, you know, choose, like, decide, like, what you're going to sing melodically or what you're going to, uh, if it needs a voice, I guess, would be the question. Um, I just, <clears throat> I just let it, I honestly, I just let it loop. And I just start singing, I should just start, like, riffing over, over top the chords, over top whatever I made. And I just, like... Until I until I get something that sticks, until I get something that like, if I were to leave, if I were to like, let's say I'm making it right, mm-hmm. and then I, I lay down the the vocals. I want to so when I go on that call, like that ride to the coffee shop or whatever. When I come back, I still can sing it exactly how how it is. Like it sticks perfectly in my head. Yeah, so it's like, like ear candy. It's like stuck there. Yeah, so like I know like yeah, the idea of making it uh, memorable. And very catchy is uh, very very important to me. Like the idea of making it like whistle. I don't know if this is a word whistleable. You can yeah, make it, I know. You can I guess that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's, that's a good way to describe it. Whistleable, bro. Yeah. Because <laughs> no, I mean it's true. Like even you know, <clears throat> people sing the melody back. Whether that's you know a top line or a vocal line or whatever. It's like people, even if they're singing chords, are gonna sing like the top the, the melody. Top, you know, the top notes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I. That's how I usually come about doing it. Yep. So, what are uh, you have some placements? I don't know if you can go into them or anything, but you have some placements or things on hold right now with uh, anything a, coming out. Yeah, a couple. Nothing. Nothing like nothing ridiculous, but just a couple. Honestly, like I'm kind of fumbling on the whole like uh, networking and like kind of sending out for placements. I'm I'm just completely like disconnected. I'm in my own world type shit. Like I'm just. For me, that's okay though. Like, yeah, I no, feel I like don't think it's following issue. your joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't get too caught up in the like, yo, send me dinner. Nah, nah, nah. Like, I don't. I just sit and I just fucking do it. I don't want to sit here like talking holier than thou, whatever. But like, no, I just sit here and just try to do it like in the purest form. Just sitting 100%. and just, just making it, just making it. Like, no intention. Yo, I need to make. I need to make shit for Drake, bro. I need to make shit for fucking. No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. No, nah, I don't. I don't do any of that. I just sit and just. Whatever happens, happens. That's yeah, no. that's a like a you know that's kind of like a key principle, like two key principles I've been following lately, like just how I've been living my life. Literally, the last like two years, bro, has just been follow your joy and live without expectations, and yeah. you're doing both of that. And it's 
I feel like it keeps you happy. You know, you're not always chasing something. You're just living purely for what you want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's how it should be. But at the same time, like, there's bills to be paid. So you have to kind of, you know, True. you have to at some point try to like reach out and try to like, you know, secure a little placement or whatever. Yeah, but, uh, I feel like you know you're doing the right stuff though. You're 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 still creating all the time. You're you're keeping an eye out for opportunity. You are still like dropping stuff. So you know. Yeah, and I think honestly, I think I don't even think that's that bad of a model because like, just by virtue of me just doing what I do, like me just just doing my shit, like not really, whatever, kind of being ghost or whatever off the grid, like. I've had producers, like, crazy, crazy, crazy big producers, like, come up, like, message me. Cause they've seen that that Second World video. that he's, They've seen that, and they're like, yo, this is crazy. You know, here's my number. Send me packs and shit. So I think that works. Like, that, like, if you just... I think it just goes back... This might sound naive, whatever, but I think if you just make really good music, like, crazy music, somebody's gonna fucking find it, bro. Like Agreed, the, bro. The, kid, the kids will sniff it out, bro. They'll, they'll, they'll find That's it. That's how it works, dude. They know. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. That is how it is, I think. So to anyone, I would say just like networking is a big part of it and do some networking. But the majority of your time should be spent creating, to be honest. I agree. Yeah. What are some albums or songs that have kind of shaped your taste and like your sound musically? And that could be as of late or like, you know, throughout your life. Um, hmm. hey, what do I start with this one? This one's crazy. For hip hop. Um, definitely my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. That one definitely has a massive in, uh, influence on my production because um, if you like, I'll put you a, a couple of shit, a, a couple of things I've been working on afterwards. But the majority, like in that album, I was really, I uh, really, really inspired by the. Uh, there's a lot of like distorted, fuzz guitars on it, like distorted grimy guitar leads on it, and that that kind of introduced me to like progressive rock that kind of that kind of introduced me to progressive rock and like yeah f- funkadelics and all that like all that type of stuff so that definitely had a massive influence on my stuff because the, the distorted guitar lead like guitar leads in general is just a massive part of my sound and it's uh, that i can definitely say it's had some influence from that um i listen to a lot of like funk a lot of funk and stuff so like like yeah. parliament funkadelic and like Cameo funkadelic and other stuff yeah yeah uh, bro like what else Thriller, bro. I'm fucking that I'm album. Contributing so many sales to Thriller, bro. I'm contributing <laughs> so many sales to Thriller. Yeah, yeah dude, no, it's so incredible. Like it's yeah, it's still yeah, yeah. it's still being talked about years today. Later, bro. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, as I said, yeah, Thriller, massive, massive influence on my stuff. Like the the wah guitars, the the just like the the groove, the like I. Bro, every time I try to, nah, I can't. I, I'm overwhelmed. I don't even know how to talk about that album, bro. Like it's 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 crazy. Like especially the fact they were doing, doing that in the era they were doing it, just Quincy, just like fucking, just going crazy, like on tape, bro. No daw, like on tape, no nothing, no just nothing, real bro. people, bro. No nothing. And, Incredible. Yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, that's great. Let me, bro. Let me go through what I've been listening to. Uh, yeah, on definitely, bro. Like. It doesn't matter, you know, big or small, like, because you, you can find influence from a bunch of, like, different places I feel like you would never expect. Yeah. So on the R&B side, like, I'm a, bro, I'm a fucking massive weekend fan, bro. I fucking love the weekend, bro. I don't know if it's the, the Toronto and me talking, but, bro, I fucking <laughs> love, like, his earlier stuff I love. Yeah, I love the trilogy. The trilogy. And and the original it's, mixes of trilogy. Ori- I'm gonna yeah, say the original. that. The I love the original mixes, more. Bro. I like the uh, I like the original mixes more. They just re-uploaded them to Apple Music not that long yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. On and, the anniversary, the ten year anniversary. Oh my god, those are this. That was the best, bro. Like that music yeah. that was made with Ilangelo, Doc McKinney, and Doc and, and the Kenny weekend. and all them. Undefeated. Life changing. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, I like some of his uh, uh, later stuff. I like the last era I really liked from him was probably Starboy. I really liked. Cause there's a lot of funk influence on that. There's a lot of yes. funk. I feel it coming. I bro, I I'm contributing so many sales. That I feel it coming, bro. I, I love that song so much. Um, yeah. What else for the R&B? Frank Ocean, I'm a massive Frank Ocean fan. Channel Orange is a class. Do you like Ch- Blonde or Channel Orange more? That's a mm, that's a tough one. Fun. I like Channel Orange. <laughs> Do you like Channel Orange more? Channel Orange. <sighs> that's such a hard one. 
Um, I love them both, but fuck, bro. I feel like they're different but, pieces of art, though. But, to be fair, yeah, no, no, yeah. I I wouldn't even compare them because Blonde is so much more experimental. Like that's what I was gonna Channel say. Orange is, that's is why like I like kinda, Channel Orange. You kind of you kind of heard it before, like with the progressions and the um and the it drums. was more reserved. Yeah, and the drums, like it's it's something you've heard before, but with with a uh, blonde, it's it's like folk music. It's completely, completely, completely left, completely left field. So, uh, I don't know. But the thing is, I think I have more songs from Blonde in my playlist. But the few songs I have off of the uh, Channel Orange, like I I fuck with them more. But I don't know, bro. I don't know. That's the, I can't even say. I can't even. That's all right. We'll just out. we'll just leave it up to to whatever yeah, yeah, you're feeling yeah. on a certain day. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to see what else. Um, a lot of Aaliyah. I'm a oh, big fan yeah. of 90s R&B. Aaliyah. Good taste, bro. Thank you, but Daniel Caesar. I like Daniel Caesar a lot. Um, what else? <clears throat> I'm into bro. Like this is re- like I be listening to a lot of anime the- uh soundtracks. Nice. Because that's what my yeah, roommate listens to a lot. Yeah, no, and it's not even anime soundtrack. Just like Japanese. I for I don't know the era. I think it was like the eighties or whatever. But Japanese funk or whatever. It's this um. These crazy. It's 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 reminiscent of like the, of what they were doing on Thriller and stuff like that. Just like that seventy sound. Just the, the that's the crazy that you mentioned all that, that, bro. Yeah, no, I, I I'm such a big fan of it. And yeah, I'll I'll play you some stuff after. Like you can hear it. Like soundtracks, video game soundtracks, anime soundtracks, Japanese, like like culture has definitely a big influence on my on my stuff too. So yeah, I just did a a podcast with Jay Bento. And mm. he said the he his huge influence right now is seventies and eighties Japanese funk. Literally, verbatim what he said. So hey, it's crazy. He man. knows. Like, he's hip. He's hip, dude. It's just wild, um, man. That's that's the community. We're like yeah. indirectly tapped into each other in weird ways, bro. Yeah, it's crazy. Exactly. Exactly. Um, what else? Lonnie Liston Smith, like old seventies. Uh, I don't I don't know what area area he's from, but like neo soul, a lot of neo soul. Fuck, bro, I'm just going to. Oh, I like Child- Childish Gambino a lot. I like the Before the Internet. Before the Internet, I love that album. Um, so it else? sounds like you got a pretty exotic kind of taste. It's huh? all it's all over the place, to be honest. Oh, Saba, I love Saba. You hip to Saba, nice. bro? Nah, bro, he's crazy. I'll I'll show you some shit after, but it's uh, definitely it's a Chicago rapper. It's crazy. Bro, oh, I'm with how it. could I not say this? Brent Fails, bro? Brent Fails is such a massive influence of mine, bro. So I good, makes yeah. incredible music. Even his stuff, like you know, his I like his Saunder stuff especially. Oh, word! You like it more than his? Uh, <coughs> his I like both. Stuff? I like both. Like I like the, I, the, I like fuck the world, but I also like you know the the Saunder like poison stuff and all of that. Like yeah, yeah. Well, uh, S- Sampha, I really love Sampha. I love his stuff. Amazing voice, and his yeah, album's yeah. really unique. Yeah, yeah, bro. I I've listened to that album so many times. I love that album so much. Um, yeah, that's I'm definitely man. I'm definitely missing out a lot of people, but that's just like the gist of it. It's all that's over good, the place. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. Well, we'll move on to my uh, next section. This one's uh, I call this for <coughs> the nerds. This is mm. kind of for like you know the sample makers, the people that really want to know kind of like yeah, yeah, yeah. the deeper stuff. I like to n- talk to somebody on a personal level first, and then kind of like go for into sure, the sure. the you know the EQs and all that other for, stuff. Yeah, for you. All right. What are some of your most regularly used plugins? To be honest, uh, is that mixing or all everything? It could be anything. Whatever you want. For me, um, now at this point of my like my process, I don't I don't use any like VSTs for um, for sound sources. Like all the all the sounds I make are from like my my Rev two synthesizer, or my guitar, or my bass guitar, or the drums, or the um, acoustic guitar. So that that's the majority of where the sounds are coming from, but what I'm mixing them with, like Pro Q for the EQ, um, effect all the effect rack stuff. I use effect rack stuff heavy, Me good too. hertz, good hertz stuff, um, wave stuff. Um, Is there like a particular like waves plugin or like a couple waves okay, plugins yeah, yeah. use a lot? Uh, J thirty seven. I use J thirty seven all the time. Um, H delay. I use the plates, the Abbey Road plates. Um, what else? Uh, fuck, I feel like, uh, for, 
I use the CLA two way compressor for the for vocals. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I usually I, like using that uh, Puig Child compressor. All oh, those. I use that. I use that. I use that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I use that. I like the, if I'm making. I use that for more if I'm making a song. If I try to make a song because you get like clean, clean vocals with it. So I use super that. clean compression, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I use that one. But yeah, that's some off the off rip, off top of my head. That's what I'm remembering. No, that's great. Uh, so what are you know? You mentioned some uh, some of your gear. Like what are what is the most like regularly used gear you have? Like the stuff. The Rev Two easily. Rev Two. The Rev, the Rev guitar, two bass. Rev Two. Um, ran through my pedal board, uh, bass through the amp. Um, no, no, no. I mean electric guitar through the amp, bass guitar, acoustic guitar, classical guitar, the live drums. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You using the kalimba or glockenspiel or anything like that? Not as much as I used to. No, I don't really touch that no more. Not uh, no. That's I don't have. Right. A, I want to get a glockenspiel though. I don't have one. I, I want to get one. Oh, grab one, dude! They're on Amazon for like thirty bucks, forty yeah, bucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I got I, one. They're solid, bro. I watched the. Uh, I really wanted to get one when I saw the Redbone deconstructed like a couple a couple years ago. Yep. That's just so hard, bro. That shot of him was so. Hard. I wanted to get one so bad. And it's just like such a simple instrument to play that can add so much sp- so sauce. much yeah so much character and texture for sure like yeah. you can you can do crazy <clears throat> like textures with it and manipulation like it's it's I would definitely recommend scooping one up for a cheap instrument yeah yeah, yeah. I'm definitely gonna make for for Christmas <laughs> that'll be my Christmas for, gift right <laughs> yeah yeah for you. Uh, what are some of your like favorite effects to use to transform or like reshape a sound? Um, <clears throat> a lot of uh, a lot of distortion. I like distorted like distorted reverbs. So like on Echo Boy, on the Echo Boy by uh, Sound Toys. Sound Toys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this one preset. I don't know. This is a little. I don't know if I should be giving this, but but um, fuck. What's it called? I, th- I think it's called. There's this one preset called Empty Tanker, on mm-hmm. Echo Boy. Um, if uh, I use it on so many things, bro, it, it like completely, it puts it, it. It basically it takes a sound and it puts it into this like, this this room, this really small room, and it distorts the fuck out of it at the same time. So, I um I love That's that. That's crazy. Yeah yeah yeah, it's crazy. Um, I use that a lot. Uh, yeah, that's like this fuzz to it. I can't describe it, but I'll show you maybe afterwards. Um, distortion, like a lot of decapitator. What I what, sometimes what I'll do is I'll crank the drive all the way up, so it, it it like to the point where it sounds like this like eight bit fuzz like straight like it's it, it's unrecognizable. And I yeah, turn down dirty. the yeah the output, and then maybe I'll put some reverb on it afterwards. Um, a lot a big thing in my production I use a lot of I use a lot of mono reverb, like I'll put a <clears throat> a Valhalla plate. And I'll turn um, the the decay to maybe one second, and then right right next to it, I'll I'll um, are you in Ableton or you're in Ableton? Yeah, mode? do you use I'll utility? Put, yeah, I put utility and I put mo- mono on it. I use nice. that on everything because it made like th- honestly, I think that's my favorite thing to like. That's my I I love doing that so much because it makes it sound like you're right in the room when they're doing it. Definitely. So I I use that all the time. What else? Lossy G G H Z Lossy. Are you familiar yep. with that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, just makes it sound like it's going through like a Skype call, like the sample's going through a, a Skype call. I love that. Fire. Yeah, it does that. that. Like bit, re- it's like not bit reduction, but it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it can do some really crazy shit if you turn like the reduction all the way up and the speed down to zero. It basically turns whatever you make into like this like moving sine wave, which is really That's cool. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Is that I, bro? Throw some reverb on that afterward, bro. It's fucking. It's a classic. GGS. Bro. It's a classic. Bro. I'm telling you. No, um, that's amazing. Do you do any like pitch <coughs> like altering or anything or anything like that? Um pitch altering like for for what like pitch shifting between octaves between in a sample or whatever? Yeah, like whether that's like, you know, pitching your sample kind of up or down or like doing a like using something like little alter boy or, like on a vocal and kind of changing formant and that kind of thing. What I do with my vocals, uh people always ask me this all the time what I like because it sounds like um and a lot of my samples it sounds like a, like a female singing. It sounds like a female singing. What I do is I don't I don't put a little altar boy. What I do is I like 
let's say the sample that's 90 BPM. I'll take it down to 60 BPM, sing it at uh I'll, because um in Ableton you can you can time stretch the uh the sample to match the you can make the you let's say you're going from 90 to 60. When you're going from 90 to 60, the sample becomes slower and it becomes it it should become lower pitched. That just that's how analog works. So basically what when I do is you go is from I, 90 to 60, it's two thirds of the pitch, and that two thirds goes down a fifth. Something something like that. Yeah. So basically I take it down to this to 60 BPM or whatever. I record it when it's at that lower pitch. I record my vocals when it's at that lower pitch. Then afterwards I take it. I speed it back up to 90, and now all of a sudden my vocals sound like it's a, it's a female singing. It sounds like it's some like 90s soul record. That's because, so smart, bro. Yeah, and it, it, it sounds it doesn't sound like forced at all. It sounds so fluid and raw because that's how that's how they used to that's how like they did it when they had 100%. to all those like sample records. That's what they did. They took the sample and they sped it up, and the pitch went up with it. Yep. Because what I found if you um if you let's say like I, let's say I'm at 90 BPM and I take it down by three uh, semitones at 90 BPM. I record my vocals, then I pitch it back up. There's like a time stretch thing going on my vocals. It doesn't sound good. 100%. So, so if you want to, my just rule of thumb is if you want to pitch something up, record at a lower uh, pitch and then speed it up, and then pitch it up and speed it up afterwards. But yeah, I do that. And it's Ableton's kind of really good with that. No, I mean I totally. I I've done that before because you can use yeah. uh, the re the repitch. The repitch. That's yeah. The repitch. That's the warping setting. Yeah, the repitch. Yeah, that's what I do. Uh, I set on repitch and I do it. That's really smart. And I even saw uh, like a video like two days ago where the Beatles did that on some records. Like back in the day, they sped the record up just a little bit, and that's why like John and Paul's vocals sound like extra nasally. Like they're like yeah. pitched up just like a tone, like not that much, but that's why it sounds like. Hi, you know what I'm talking about. It's, it's, the, it's the very speed. Yeah, it's yep. the very speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy, incredible, man. dude. It's crazy tool, crazy tool. And you're using it in like a modern way too. Yeah. And that's like, and you, it's, it's what I love about it is you're using it so well that people are literally messaging you and asking about it. Yeah, that was my top, like, that was my top thing when I dropped the, uh, the Desolation Breakdown. It's like, how'd you get your, your vocals to sound like that? No, 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 no. So like yeah no in the second world video I kind of alluded to it because there's a part of a sample where I it sounds hella slow and I record the vocals and then I speed it back up but yeah I'll show you uh, I'll show you some of the, the recent stuff afterwards but yeah please dude well and now if anybody asks you you can just send them to the podcast and be like yeah I talk about it yeah 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 exactly. <laughs> of course bro of course yeah uh all right let me see uh. What are some of the most underrated or slept on plugins in your opinion? Hmm. Fuck. With me, like I don't be using any crazy, like like crazy outdated Hungarian plugin that nobody's ever heard, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, I got I, I just use like I just yeah, as I said before, like the wave stuff, the sound toy stuff, and the the good herd stuff. Um I'm trying to think of something you know what? Cause this is um this Mac I got it like a year ago, whatever. Um, with Mac you can't get those crazy like low key plugins uh, yeah. that you can on Windows. But on my old computer, I had a bunch of fucking no name shit that outdated as crazy. But yeah, no. But no, as I to answer the question, no, I don't. There's nothing I can put my finger on right now. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, what is some secret sauce that you wish you had known earlier when you started making samples? And that could be, you know, like composition wise, that could be effect wise, you know, but like what was something that you wish you knew earlier that would have really <clears> helped you? Don't make it, don't try to make your stuff sound like so, like, don't try to be like, make so many, put so many layers, so many sounds to the point, like, just for the fuck of it, just putting layers because, oh yeah, I want to make it complex. I want to make th th the soundscapes, the textures, and then, and then. That, that bro, that, that no one gives a shit about that. Like the average, true. the average listener does not care about it. Like, what matters is the feeling that that it um, that's that's it evokes that the sample evokes. So it's like, um, cut all that extra shit out, bro. Because originally, like when I was making samples, 
Bro, me and some man from the Chosen Ones, we were having a battle. Like, who could have the most layers and samples? I was going up to 50, like 50 layers in a sample. And those samples were horrific compared to, like, the stuff some I'm making now. Some of the simple now. ones. I'm, I'm not even saying, I don't, I wouldn't say I make simple ones, but the stuff I'm making now, like, the stuff, on average, I probably have, like, 13 layers in a sample, which is, which is decent, considering also it's live drums. So, like, the drums take up six different tracks when you're, when you're making them up. But yeah, no. Uh, get make it make it sweet. Make it to the point. Make it like you know. Don't try to impress everybody with the sound. Like, oh yeah, look how many look at this crazy technique I did to make this crazy texture. Like nobody cares, bro. It's like, all that matters is how it sounds and how it makes people feel. So just like you know, just just focus on making it. Uh, just focus on communicating your idea. That's it. That's all I'm gonna say. Like in, I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> All right, well, we'll move on to the final five. So this is going to be uh, my last five questions, and these you can answer, you know, one word, one sentence. They don't have to be real long if you don't want them to. Yeah, true, true, true. What is something you wish more people did in their music? One thing one people wish more did in their music. Well, honestly, I think just people, like, I wish more people would just create, like, just create from a pure place. Just make music from a pure place. Like, like... I can I can tell like when I'm making when I when I hear when people are trying to put me onto things and they're trying to show me whatever like their new stuff or they're trying to sh- recommend a friend of theirs who made something like I can tell when they're making it and I can hear it and it sounds like you're trying to get you're trying to get a placement you're trying to get that placement to win over that one shorty bro you're trying to get that you're trying to get that you know money whatever I I can hear it I can hear those like bad intentions i don't i'm not like this i'm not like an energy like type of person but just i can feel it like when someone's making something and it's not authentic and it's not who they are it's not genuine so i'm just saying make the music you want to hear don't make no fucking 4pf little baby money no no i get you i get you i get you bro but no, no, no. create create from a pure place like yeah, don't yeah. don't do it like <laughs> with an yeah. end game in mind you know yeah just put, just create with no intention Yep, just create, create without no expectations, intentions. dude. Without expectations, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Uh, where do you see music <laughs> going in the next five years? See, I always struggle with that with that question because just by vir- virtue of who I am, like I'm very, as I said, from as you've probably seen by this interview, I just make the music and I just let whatever happen. I forecast, like I predict that in five years I'm gonna be, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be out of here. But like, mm-hmm. you know, but uh, I'm not like. I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing, just creating, trying to get better, trying to improve. Like, you know, I, I yeah, no. In five years, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, be, it's gonna be crazy. Like, it's gonna be unrecognizable from from now. Definitely. I feel like you're like already, you know, shaping the sound of the future, and I feel like hopefully that's crazy. That's a crazy um thing to say, but that's that's ridiculous. Wow, thank you. Now, I think you are, bro. Like, like you know, what is kind of like where do you? What's like your ideal, you know, kind of day, like waking up, like, or I guess what is your ideal reality where you're kind of living and creating with joy? Um, I'd probably say like, have a nice little spot, whatever, a nice little, first a nice little apartment, like secure a nice little apartment, um, wake up, I want, I, I want like long term future, I want the place I make music at to be separate from the place I live at. I want like to have like on some Kenny Beats type shit, I want like to have like, the apartment here and like the studio somewhere else that I completely own. Like there's no paying for no time, whatever. I own it. Like everything there, I own it. Um, ideally, yeah, waking up, driving there, calling people over to come and and work. Just spend the whole day making music. Maybe afterwards we go do something or something like something like that. Just on some really chill shit. Just on some because that's how the best music's made. Like, like look at as I said, my my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. Like they rented out a studio in Hawaii. For like months, for like a year, and they just sat there and they just made music. Then they would go and eat and go to the beach and do the all. Like that's genuine. It's such a cheat code. Like it's so simple. Like people just be dumb, bro. People just they, they think of they think about it too much. Like you just need to make from the heart and just fucking just make it, bro. Like yeah, yeah. you don't gotta let like you know the the what you're wearing, what you're buying, like how like how expensive your shoes are all that shit like that's not what matters no bro that's not what makes the good music like and those things are nice (laughs) and it's cool if you want that but like at the end of the day i feel like 
you just have to really be intentional and really love what you do and that's how like things are gonna work out for the sure. best for sure yeah definitely gotcha, man. what would you say is the best way for a <laughs> sample maker to improve their samples i think um start start listening to a like you're, you're you're gonna need to put in the hours like regardless of whatever like advice whatever you need like a lot of the shit i'll tell you 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 will need to find out on yourself find find out about it yourself for it to truly hit you because i could tell you some advice now or whatever but it won't truly hit you like compared to as if you found it out yourself in the process of making music um i'd say yeah as i say just hit the bag every day just make music every day listen to try to listen to as many different things as possible like if you're trying to if you're trying to make r&b or let, let's say you're trying to make modern r&b don't go around listening to modern r&b for your inspiration don't listen to modern r&b for your inspiration listen to go listen to maybe 90s r&b 90s neo soul 90s soul funk pop all these different all these different genres and 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 pull everything together from what, what you learn from it and and try to integrate it into into modern day R and B, if that's what you're making, because I feel like a lot of uh, like, for example, hip hop producers who are trying to make like hard, dark samples, or whatever. Their base, their knowledge of their genre is just based off of what like they're trying to they're trying to make crazy um, hip hop samples, and all they're listening to is hip hop. All they're listening to is like, and it's not even like my beautiful dark twisted fantasy hip hop. It's like well, you know, I'm not gonna shit on anybody. But no, like, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> but we but know. Yeah, I get you. They're not. Yeah, yeah. They're not listening to like a wide variety. <clears throat> yeah, if you want to make like hip hop, bro, go listen. Fuck around. Listen to, to to rock, bro. Listen to like progressive rock or something, and then pull your what you know from there, and apply it to hip hop. Like, and then and that's how you separate yourself. That's how you people be like, oh, yeah, where where's this coming from? So that's how. Yeah, that's advice. Like, that's always what made like I felt like Kanye so great. I felt like really Kid Cudi when he came out. That's what made him so prolific at the time was because he was not how every other rapper was. You know, he exactly, was going yeah. on on some like indie music. He was going on yes, Band of Horses yes. samples. He was remixing Vampire Weekend songs. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. just being creative, and that's what separated him. Yeah, you gotta push the you gotta push the the needle. You you always have to push the needle every day. Huh? I agree, bro. I agree 100%. Oh, hold on. I'm not knocking. Uh, what is the worst advice you've ever received? The worst advice? Wow. Bro, honestly, I'd be blocking out that shit. I'd just be tuning it out completely. I don't know. I like... But I let like me let, that. Let me listen. Bro, honestly, there's people saying, oh, yeah, you have to... If you want to get... If you want a, a gun placement, sit down and just... Fucking shit out gonna loops every day like no 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 like no no and like you have it so wrong bro you have it so wrong it's ridiculous like yeah no, everything just stems back to just creating from from the heart just creating what you want to hear but, yeah I agree yeah now for the final <laughs> question what is the best advice you've ever received It's not gonna be like my friend no 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 told me in nine in in two thousand and ten. No no it's not gonna be like that, bro. Nah, that's um, okay. <laughs> I mean I feel like you kind of touched on it already. Yeah, I already it said sounds it. like creating already, from the heart, bro. Creating from the heart, bro. Just create from the heart and just just make music that you love, bro. Cause this shit's like this shit treat it like treat it like a journal, bro. Treat treat every sample you make or every piece of music you you make as like an entry in in your journal type shit. So that way, like, you can go back <clears throat> in years to come and be like, oh, yeah, this is how I, fe how I was feeling in this this era or this time of my life. And I, I think you'll find by doing that, then the music you make is, A, like, as authentic as possible, and B, like, it's better. It's just better than if you were to try to make something for money or for to, to get a placement or whatever. So, definitely. That was amazing. That was that was God <laughs> channeling through you right there, bro. <laughs> Yeah, bro. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, well, I try, bro. Nice try. Well, thank you for taking all that time with me today, bro. No I really problem, appreciate bro. you coming on. I'm, I hope this was an easy first podcast for, for sure. you. For sure, bro. No, this was uh, it definitely set the it set the bar high for future podcasts. Definitely. 
I hope yeah, so. Yeah. And I'll have you on again. Hopefully, you know, we could check For in sure. like a year from now, see how things changed. And It'll things be a yearly grew. thing. Every every it, December seventeenth, it will uh, <laughs> come. <laughs> there you go. No, yeah, I yeah. mean, it'd be awesome, man. I just <laughs> you're a really good human. I could tell, like Thank beyond you, music, bro. Like you're a good person. You have a good good heart, good head on your shoulders. You want the right stuff out of life and. If, yeah, I, if you, nobody's told you today, I'm proud of you, bro. So thank you, bro. That that means so much, and and you too. Like I find it like I'm inspired for your like your want of knowledge, like your need, your want and desire to learn new things and learn different techniques and different ways of communicating your own ideas. Which was, um, you know, I'm. It's definitely a trait, a very impressive trait. Is you know, this is crazy. I appreciate that, man. Well, you have a good night, and uh, we'll end the podcast here. And right. I'll talk to you again soon.